Hello guys, this is Silver Fox A and this is a project that I have initiated. So this particular YouTube channel is a part of my project where I intend to share all these uh, set of ser server and infrastructure related setups which would probably cost you thousands or more than that if you approach a company but this this is something that you as a as a, as an individual can get it sorted in barely some five to ten minutes or half an hour if you are in sync with the idea of helping others please do subscribe my channel so that it will motivate me and encourage me to keep adding more content to the channel this is a new playlist that i'm working on where i intend to share with you how you can create a restful apis using slim now slim is one of the lightweight uh, php framework that you can utilize there's one more that is called lumen so i'll try to cover that in another playlist maybe but in this one um what we'll do is we'll, we'll start off with uh, creating apis so APIs is something like a layer um between your backend and the client okay this is this is an interface now when, when you device a apis you need to ensure all the backend logics plus let's say operational logics or the computational logics needs to reside in your api layer not the client side so if you do that that's not a decent way to um, create or develop uh, this sort of products before you install slim you need to have composer installed so i made a video on that how to install a composer you probably want to check that out i'll put the link in the description Okay, to install, all you need to do is use Composer, which is a PHP library manager, and then require Slim, right, with the version code. Okay, use terminal or CMD, uh, basically navigate to the folder or the directory. Oh, create one if you don't have, for me, I don't have it created, so I'll just uh, create a, a phrase directory for this particular project. Create the project directory and once you're done, create an index file. It can be PHP, it can be HTML, right? Just create one so that I, I'll, I'll be able to help, uh, show you how it works. Okay. One, once you're done, uh, write some hello, hello world script or something, some random stuff. Okay. I'll go off with hello world. Okay. Once you're done saving, now open up a, probably open up a new tab because this needs to keep running or what you can do is put it on mem but i want to use a php script to create a localhost you can use php hyphens s capital s localhost and the port number so that will create a local server on this particular project directory or for this particular project directory so you need not install this xamp and all these things to uh, work on work with this particular project okay so you can see the hello world script printer right so that means it's working fine now now what we will do is we'll, we'll require this this particular dependency that is slim okay so i'll just show you that i have the composer installed in case if you don't have, want to have you probably want to install composer you can check the link in the description for that particular video okay once it there copy paste this this is the composer command to uh, require slim library to your project let's do that I'll uh, it is going to take some time so what we'll do is uh, we'll go to our project directory and I'll just walk it through the structure of the project you can use any editor code editor I'm using uh, sublime Okay, so this is a composer.json. So um, composer is kind of writing the slim library and all the dependencies to it. Okay, so you can see the files changing on the left hand side, right, in the code editor. So they have added a vendor file. Vendor is where you have all the dependencies installed. So if you just open it up, you see composer, you see also slim. So all the libraries are uh, added to this vendor file uh, directory. And you don't want to mess up with this and they created an auto load so it will kind of load up uh, the necessary uh, dependencies and if you go to composer.json they have already added the composer and this is a composer log now this is this is a system generated file you need not even test that composer.log but uh, what you can do is here composer.json you can keep adding your dependencies as and when you need okay so what we'll do is we'll try to run the example sample that slim gives us and then we'll try to modify on top of that okay 
so this is the example sample that they have on their home page I just copy the entire part and a script I'll brief you through the uh, lines uh, on what these lines are all about copy paste the entire thing now if you see use right so the, those are certain sort of uh, uh, files that you are utilizing and you are using namespace to kind of brief that and this is required so I'm utilizing the auto load to require my file and then you have the slim app okay now so what you are doing is we are using app application and then we're utilizing http method get and passing this this is the url and name is one of the parameters when we are uh, doing this test cases i'll show you how you can uh, vary get parameters uh, with respect to the url and then we have app run so it's basically uh, running or starting the app okay now if you go to a browser and uh, hit this url so if, uh, this home directory won't work because we don't have it specified is slash hello so there's a different url okay let's say hello and the name so it will print the name and the hello text as, as per the uh, code base now we'll remove the boilerplates and try to run our uh, write our own set of logics okay instead of that i'll just uh, print get for this particular uh, get request okay get and that is fine now we'll create uh, one more request there's a post request you can either copy the paste or you can just write your own it's the same 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 uh, syntax okay it's just the body parameter varies so you have let's say blog I, I can do that because see first one is a get and then we have a post okay so th that will hit in a different manner and add the basic uh, parameters okay once that's done what we'll do is we'll, we'll try to parse the body okay now when it's a post it, it's it, the data sets will be there in the body so you have to parse it from the request okay So it will be something like this that uh, let's say body and uh, it will be request or we'll take it from the parameter this one request and then we have get parsed body p a i p a r s t parsed body okay so th that's whatever request you are sending in in a body part that will kind of highlight here okay now there's a mistake that i did but that's intentional i'll show you how you can track the errors right so this new would be a problem uh, new custom creating an instance of json and code right that's not allowed or probably that's not there okay before that uh, before showing you the error so this is postman this is a uh, application you can say where you can run your uh, apis now get parameter is easy you can just put it on the url or browser you will i will receive what about the post and put and other set of stuff for these we need postman or something similar so if you if you're aware of something similar that's perfectly fine in case if you're not i'll recommend this postman okay right just below this collection you'll see a plus icon this thing so that's basically to create a collection collection is nothing but uh, you, you're, you're making a project api something right that's more like a collection now let's say i want to create blog api so i just added that and a bit of a description okay something right it's totally up to you whether you want to give it or not it's not a mandatory uh, filter as an optional one and once it's done it will create a blog api folder for you and you can keep adding packages it's more, it's more like creating a nested uh, folder so within blog api i might want to have auth as a as a mo uh, as a module and within that i want to have other set of steps okay so let's set this uh the url that i copy paste and let's say let's say uh the url varies right so i just wanted to have slash blog and uh, so this, these are the http methods that you get we are going for get for the time being and we'll hit in blog 
okay so you can see the result being uh, displayed on, on the uh, body part so this is the get that we wrote okay now let's say we want to try out a uh, post so you just select the post from this list now you try to hit but before that we need to pass in pass, pass certain sort of parameters so that you can get it from the body now you have n number of options that is form data encoded url raw and the binary binary is to upload certain sort of files so you want to multi multi part um, uh, things that you are doing so probably want that so let's say i go for form data for the timing i'll just enter a key so this is a key value pair key and a corresponding values that i'm adding so there's certain sort of things that i'll do for a dummy purpose okay some random stuff you can, you can just add in something so that you just see that this works okay once you're done click on send so now this shows an error so this this is what i wanted to highlight to you uh, how you can track uh, the records or the errors in case if you are running it on php or uh, running the local host using php command so if you go to the other sector you get the errors displayed here completely Right. If you see this, that says class JSON and code not found because we try to instantiate uh, this particular thing, but it's not a class. It's for, okay. So we'll just remove the a new and just run it again. You'll see the results being displayed in JSON encoded form. Okay. Now there's one more thing. Uh, we, we want to accept let's say json for a uh, json format output right we have to add a header that says i want application json okay send that and click on uh, this body part and go to the pretty section you will get pretty right and get to highlight uh, this json right if it's a json it will come formatted Okay, now what you're going to do is you can save this request so that later on you can probably utilize this, do a test case and a number of steps. So when you when you are doing or when you are saving it, ensure so you, you will save in a decent fashion so that the developers who will be utilizing your APIs probably understand it well. So you need to write certain sort of logic that you have implemented. Basically give a description. Can be a short uh, description, just ensure that they understand what you are trying to convey. Now this is the blog API. I want it all this sort of APIs are for post. So I can create a sub subdirectory that says these are for post. Okay. And uh po uh, like save this APIs under the post. Probably let's say I have uh, auth APIs. I'll create a separate directory that call auth under the blog APIs. So for post you see it here as a nested and within that you have the request. So this stays organized. Now let's uh, save our second API. There's the get. Okay, we'll save it. I'll write a decent uh, title and description. Okay, uh, we'll create two more um, APIs for the post for the time being. That is, uh, one is your put and one is your delete. Now put is basically when I want to update certain uh, post and delete is to delete that. We can copy paste entire thing and just change the method that is make it put and the other one delete okay so let's save this and try to hit postman okay let's say put maybe and for this you have body right uh, you have just added a form input but for this you have to go for form uh, encoded uh, url encoded right because this is basically put and delete okay uh, i just pass in certain data sets there you go if you liked what you just saw or it is helpful for you in a manner please do subscribe and keep following for more of this content that will help me um or probably that will encourage me to create more of videos.